When my dad died, I was 18 years old. It was probably one of the worst experiences of my life. The day he died, um, I got a phone call from my sister telling me my father was missing. And I went to his house. It was probably about 11 at night. And I think I already knew in my heart. Um, he had sent me an odd email maybe a month before and uh, we had made up because we had fought for about two years and didn't speak. So we made up and we were seeing each other for six weeks and then all of a sudden my dad was missing and that's not my dad. He was a Navy chief. He was, it just wasn't him. And I remember going to the house and I knew where he was. I, I knew, like something in my heart told me. He was, like there was a woods by my house and he used to catch me smoking there when I was a teenager. And he had taken walks recently and you know the past couple months he would always walk down there. So I knew he was there and uh, that night I tried to go. The night they said he was missing and I got to the top of the path and I couldn't do it. So I tried again the next day in the daytime and I actually did go down the path. I walked all the way around the lake and it turns out I was 10 feet from his body but I had got this like it was like someone dumped ice cold water on me and I just froze and like turned and ran the entire way back. I guess we kind of have a conflict. The day he was found was two weeks later. And I knew he was gone, but my, uh, my, his girlfriend kept trying to hold on, you know, and saying he was just missing, taking a vacation. I got a call, and I knew they were going to do a search of the woods, because I kept saying, go check the woods, check the woods. My dad's girlfriend got uh, cadaver dogs that her friends owned, and they went and searched in the woods Saturday, November 1st, 2008. And I didn't really think of it. At about 11.30, I got a phone call from her. And all she said was I needed to come to his house. And I knew, and I just kept saying no. I said no like probably 300 times. The whole ride there, I just said no. That's all I could say. I called my mom, who was in Florida. Before I even got there, before I even left the house to head there, I, I told my mom, I was like, Mom, you need to get plane tickets to come up here because we're going to have to do his funeral. I rode over there. The whole time I just said no, and when I got there, like, it was true, you know? They had found his body, um, he was barely recognizable as a human. So he couldn't even be buried, but he didn't want to. He got cremated and put into three separate urns, two of which my sisters, me and my sister have, and then one, his main one my aunt has, that goes to me later. Wow, like, the probably the worst day of my life, honestly. It's especially since I knew it was coming. It's just crazy. <laughs> I don't even know. Like, I didn't expect it, but I did. Like, you know, I kept it's false hope. I thought about this. I have. When I was 16, we, we stopped speaking. I, I ran away from home because, you know, I, we, I'd had a lot of abuse in my life and he didn't believe it because it was away from him and so that really affected us. We started fighting and I said things I shouldn't have and so did he. He wrote this email to me in which, and my dad was a Navy chief so he's not been very emotional, but he wrote me an email telling me what he had been going through the past two years, how he felt about himself. He admitted to me that he hasn't looked in a mirror in over a year because he hates what he sees. And he said a couple other things that he felt like a failure as a father. But at the end of the email, he asked me not to mention it, not to reply back, not to bring it up. And to this day, that's what I regret, is not saying that he was not a failure as a father, that he was my best friend, that he was the best man I've ever met. He was the best role model. He was like my ideal of a real man. I really regret not telling him that, you know, and I did, I wanted to, I was going to, but I spoke to my mom about it. She told me since the past couple years, he's trying to let me back in, but I didn't listen was one of our main things. She was like, so just listen and respect him, show him you've changed. And I so regret doing that. I wish I could have just said one sentence, just looked at him once in the eyes and told him he was the best father ever because it might have changed something. He was my best friend my whole life. It was daddy's little girl, that was my email address. <laughs> like my, my best, best friend. He just had this love me for me mentality. Like 
he loved himself fully. Like uh, probably the best statements I ever heard were out of his mouth. Like uh, you cannot truly love your another until you truly love yourself. I fully embrace that. I know that he chose to go when he wanted, the way he wanted, and he was happy with that. And so that's why I'm okay with it. You know, I, I know that's what he wanted, and he always did what he wanted. So that's why I came out here to uh, chase acting and modeling. Because even when I was little, he would encourage me or you know, like take pictures for me, and I'd like do little poses and stuff. So I wouldn't kill myself. You know, I have two daughters now to live for. I would never. And I, do wonder sometimes why I wasn't, me and my sister weren't enough to make him fight through it, you know? And that's the one thing I would try and tell people before they commit suicide is just like, you may feel at the lowest of low and you may feel like nobody loves you or cares about you, but you don't understand how many lives will be destroyed by you leaving. It's just so sad that, you know, you never realize what you have until it's gone.